Oh, hey there. Um, if you have a channel and you're speaking the truth about sanctification and things, don't back down and do not uh, apologize for speaking something that is against the grain or is misinterpreted to be uh, in a spirit that it's not. If you're just speaking the truth in love, um, you don't need to apologize for it. By apologizing to someone who disagrees, on the one hand, it seems like you're apologizing because uh, you don't want to hurt their feelings and you're saying, you know, I my intention wasn't to be in any way snippy or anything like that. Unfortunately, it muddies the waters further because then that person will take it as, because they're already unable to see the truth, okay? They're, this is something that we've been proclaiming for a year. Uh, we have to be established in present truth and we have to receive the truth. And there are those who, I guess, they started their YouTube channel before they were ready to be teaching. They hadn't been through the things that God brings people through to prepare them to be someone who holds the mystery of faith in a clear conscience and can, should actually be teaching and look to as someone with food. There is a sobriety when it comes to holding the word. And that doesn't mean we're always right on everything, but we should be in fear and trembling about uh when it comes to the matter of speaking truth that's why i was in such agony when i went through talking about romans 9 and different things because the i am afraid of mishandling the word and misleading anyone um i don't see that fear in some channels where they started their channel early they've got a lot of influence and they're like this is my channel i'll do what i want and who are you to tell me right and then also, anybody who comes out and says something different is perceived as attacking that person. Well, now if you apologize and say, oh, no, I wasn't attacking you. I'm just trying to clarify the truth or whatever, that they just take that as an admission that you were wrong and they're correct. It affirms them and strengthens them to keep teaching error, unfortunately. And, you know, Petra did the video... Uh, where she mentioned how Miles Stanford said, look, a lot of people get excited about identification truth and want to go out and tell everybody, but people aren't ready for it. That's true. Um, but that's not to be the norm. We shouldn't base where people are at in this religious culture uh, and call it normal. Paul expected people to be clear on these matters uh, and warned against anyone who would teach differently. Unfortunately, now the whole system teaches differently. Everybody teaches differently. Very few teach the mystery of Christ. Um, but that doesn't make it a novel or deeper understanding. It's just the normal understanding of the Christian life. You have to have it that way in your mind. You got to be settled that this is not some deeper truth uh, that is a is something that only a few should know. He wants the mystery of Christ, which was hidden from ages past, to be made known to all the saints. All the saints are to know where the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is our righteousness. Christ is our sanctification. Christ is our life. Christ is our hope of glory. It is not... Oh, you've got your sins forgiven. Now you can start the Christian life. And the Christian life is a patchwork of works uh, and trying and struggling. No, that is wilderness wandering unbelief. And we are to labor to enter that rest. And we have to hold that forth, truth forth uh, like it's the normal truth that people who speak against it are gainsayers. It may be that they never heard that before, but it's all over the scripture. It may be that we were blinded to this truth and we struggled most of our Christian life because we were in the systems and in the legalism and we couldn't figure out why we were struggling and we were wandering around in the wilderness. We could have been, but, but now that we've repented and we are 
receiving the truth and being established in the present truth, we have to contend for it as if it's the norm because it is. We don't apologize and go, oh, sorry, you know, I know this is deeper truth and hard to receive. No, we. that's what makes it so that only a couple people are talking about it. Oh, well, that's deeper stuff. I usually just click off that. I don't even know what that is. You know, no, we need a, not a fragmented message about the Christian life where some people are talking about justification. Some people are talking about sanctification. It's all one thing. As you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him. The way you walk in him is the same way you received him, by the hearing of faith, by hearing the word and believing what it is that you have, not endeavoring to pursue or generate your own righteousness or holiness or sanctified living per se, but believing what God says about you and resting in that truth and then maintaining the good work which is your whole life. Good works are not something separate from your life. Good works are your life and your gifting coming out so that whatever you do is in the name of the Lord Jesus. You just do it unto him. You live unto him. You raise your kids unto him. You live in your family unto him. You do your job unto him. Or if you're the entrepreneurial type and you start some kind of ministry, outreach, whatever, you do that unto him. But that's not different than the person who goes to work and bags groceries or does whatever. Everybody should be living unto Christ. And Christ should be the life. Unfortunately, in Christian circles, good works are taught a, as if they're something else. You know, that confuses people. Sanctification is taught of as if it's something else. Yeah, we keep ourselves from situations. We flee temptation and stuff like that, you know. It's not that big of a deal. But that... You fleeing temptation and keeping yourself out of situations where you're tempted doesn't deal with the inward lust in your heart that is still ready to go if the opportunity presents itself. Only the life of Christ, only putting to death your uh, body and presenting yourself as a living sacrifice to the Lord and recognizing that you are alive together with Christ and that his life is in you will ever deal with the inward struggle of the Christian that every Christian experiences and there's only one answer for that struggle which is Christ in you and that has to be boldly proclaimed and contended for and fought for and that is the doctrine of Christ we are to continue in and if anyone has not the doctrine of Christ they're not you know we're not to receive them we're not to say God bless you if they're teaching something other than the doctrine of Christ, we don't make, we don't get all friendly with that. It's one thing if like, for example, somebody's on my wall and they have questions, fine. But if they get into uh, an argument where they start contending against the doctrine of Christ, I don't say, oh, we just agree to disagree. I love you, brother. Even if they say they're justified, if they're undermining the gospel, which covers not only justification, but sanctification and glorification, they're undermining it and arguing against it, I'll hide them from my channel. I'm not going to say, oh, that's my brother. They're... Once they start arguing against that, even if they are my brother, they're in error. And if they won't receive correction, then I have to just mark them and turn away. Not for their sake, not for my sake, really, but for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of the truth, you know, like Paul said, uh, he wouldn't subject himself even for a minute, him and Titus, to those in Jerusalem so that the truth of the gospel would remain with them. He rebuked Peter openly, uh, even though he's a brother, so that the truth of the gospel would remain with the saints. You're burdened for those who are uh, you're feeding uh, has to eventually be greater than your desire to be friends with everybody or to show everybody that you love them. And unfortunately, manipulative people will capitalize on your sensitive conscience and manipulative spirits too. Maybe that person won't say something, but some spirit, there's some spiritual stuff working that causes people to say, Oh, it's okay. We just, we, you know, we love you. And you, and you look at it and you go, that's not real love. That's fear there. They are moving in fear. For some reason. Why? Well, there's probably 
spiritual warfare going on. Anytime you have error being taught, it's not just someone when it's when it's consistent and persistent. The person won't receive correction. It, that's not just like oh I made a mistake. That is a uh, error comes from spirits of error. Or like John says, that's how we know the spirit of truth. This is the spirit of error. There's a spirit of error. When someone can't receive the truth, uh, there's a spirit of error operating. Now, that doesn't mean they're not a child of God, and that doesn't mean God can't get through to them, but it's a matter of spiritual warfare. And that warfare is not one with uh, trying to uh, reconcile and just agree to disagree and pretend like everything's okay and now there's this elephant in the room that you're not allowed to talk about that shuts everybody down you know no you have to say i'm sorry we disagree i'm going to have to turn away until you receive correction on this even if you are talking about something deeper that supposedly most Christians wouldn't understand. The reason they don't understand is because the environment is abnormal and the enemy has had the day. You know, he's allowed to build up the system of error and then it he makes it so that anyone who speaks differently is stigmatized as if they're negative, uh, they are rebellious, they're unloving, they're uncharitable, they're divisive. All those accusations are how he silences the sheep who have a sensitive conscience and what's interesting is that the ones who uh are supposedly being attacked are then free to say whatever they want and they never apologize and they're never corrected and they take every apology as an affirmation that they're correct and they need to keep going and doing what they're doing you know it's very upsetting uh and this may, you know, I know people are on different walls saying different things right now. This could be a real, this, this is like, uh, this doesn't come across real pretty, I know, compared to what other people are saying. But I just feel like I need to address it because I'm seeing it. You know, you cannot fix this situation. Like Tim always says, you can't fix a spiritual problem with political solution. A political solution is... Oh, well, we can disagree, agree, you know, we agree to agree, disagree on this, but I love you so much, you know. We're fine. I treasure you. You're so dear. Yeah, but now you can no longer talk about the most important thing because it's the elephant in the room you're not allowed to talk about anymore. <laughs> That's not real love and fellowship. That is a political peace, a stalemate. This is a spiritual problem that people are... Uh, saying it's justification by faith and sanctification by works. That's what the reformers didn't go far enough, right? Um, and then the reform tradition just parked on, well, it's sanctification by works, and then eventually they undermined and undid the whole gospel because the implication of sanctification is by works eventually undermines justification by faith. They're connected. It's not two different things. They really are connected. Why? How are they connected? In the person of Christ. Christ is our sanctification, just as he is our righteousness. If you receive Christ as your righteousness, that is the door to receive him as your sanctification. You don't get to receive him as your righteousness and then reject him as sanctification. Uh, but it is true that it's a matter of revelation. And yet God is raising up average people and helping to clarify this truth and letting average people understand it. And we who speak this need to be very clear that this is what we're supposed to be speaking. We need to not apologize for it. And we need to say that speaking against this truth is error. And that those who do speak against this truth, Christ is our sanctification, uh, need to be marked. They're teaching an error. What do you do with teaching an error? It's one thing if they're just a believer. It's another thing if they are confusing the body of Christ because they have um, there's the perception that they're a teacher. That's a different thing. That we're we're instructed to handle that differently. And I I don't want to be at war with anybody, and I don't want to be perceived as, you know, coming. I'm not coming against anybody. I haven't even mentioned anybody by name. But at the same time, 
I'm not going to the people where I disagree and say, hey, I, you know, you did a video about me. I, I don't I don't respond to videos that are done about me typically. Uh, you know? So we just have to keep marching on and realize that teaching and fellowship go together. And if we have fellowship, we'll be able to have a free atmosphere where we can teach the truth. This is such a major thing. We cannot back down. If you've seen this and you feel like the Lord has burdened you with this, you need to be encouraged to keep going. And, you know, I can be, I, I've been corrected several times of, you know, I can carry offense. I can be offended. I can not walk in love sometimes, you know, but my heart's, you know, pretty clear on this, that God's dealt with me about the offense issues. And yet the problem remains that there is something going on, uh, with certain channels that, you know, we have to be able to preach the truth and not mix it because our, the people on our walls are going to both sources and going back and forth. And if we pretend to make peace with it, that just undermines, you know? So, um, okay. Hopefully this was clear. Uh, I'm not going to come out looking like the nice guy on this one. Sorry.